Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Barry Fush. I'm the author of Nordic Noir, in which I've written about these people on the stage. So who's been watching Arne Dahl in this audience? <laughs> so here I'm going to say something for those of you who've not seen Arne Dahl. And I warn you now, there will be spoilers. If you don't want to hear the spoilers, you'll have to put your fingers in your ears. But for some of the questions I have to ask the cast, have I got slight, yes, I've got, I can see all your faces. So first of all, I get my glasses out and read out the various admin things I'm supposed to tell you about. There will be a signing after the event. Have you all seen the, uh, the book stall downstairs? Do you see, know where the books are? There you will be able to have books signed by Arne Dahl after the session, which is about an hour. And then we have a cast signing outside the first floor stage and screen area, straight after the signing. So has this gone on? Can you hear me still? OK, for Nordic Noir, with, uh, I've, I've met Jan several. I called him Jan. Did you notice? Yeah. Who knows the truth about Arne Dahl in this audience? <laughs> it's a pseudonym. <laughs> Okay, this is what I wrote about uh, uh, Arne Dahl. Under the mysterious Mr. Dahl, Arne Dahl's The Blinded Man is the first novel in his accomplished intercrime sequence. He has a secret identity like Superman and Batman. He is really Jan Arnold. He's a literary critic, but he writes crime fiction of genuine authority with a sinewy, uncompromising structure. His new book is Bad Blood, which is downstairs. Has anybody seen Bad Blood on... Television, okay, so you don't mind spoilers about that. And then we have the cast. I mean, what about this? <laughs> so, they have promised not to laugh at my pronunciation. You can laugh, but they can't. Marlene Arvidsson. Okay. <laughs> Shanti Roney. <laughs> Matthias Varela. <laughs> Klaus Jundmark. <laughs> and then you probably haven't noticed him on the stage. Magnus Samuelson. <laughs> So I'm going to start with the man who created it all and ask, I'm going to start with a really difficult question. So the actors are not supposed to listen to this question. Are they, <laughs> yeah. Do you feel that the TV series, Arne, has done justice to your books? What else can he say but yes? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> of course they have. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, OK. Uh, Yes, of course. Uh, it, it, it's been a long process, and of course it's a long process from a book to, to a TV series, and it's been quite a few years since I wrote this book, uh, these books, because it's five books that you've seen on TV. But, uh, and I lived with these characters for like 15 years now, and uh, I, I created them a long time ago, and I feel that I know them so well and I've gotten to know them even better now that they are alive. <laughs> so I think, yes, it's, it's the, the character and the cast is really, really fabulous. So what do you, can you hear me on this mic? Maybe I better use this one. What do you, here's the question nobody can answer from a Scandinavian country. Why do we love Scandinavian crime fiction the way we do? Uh, it's, this is the big tricky question. Uh, I think uh, uh, since 30 years it's been a separate development of crime fiction in Scandinavia in comparison to England and America or, or Britain and America. And these different uh, traditions haven't really met. And then suddenly they did and you realize that there was a whole different approach to crime fiction uh, um, on the other side of the water. And that it, it was different, but the preconditions were, were really the same. Mm -hmm. But it was a different attitude, a different way of, of describing reality and so on. And I think that's it. Close, but not 
really close. So there is still a bit of an exotism in it. Okay. So now the actors don't have such difficult questions. They only get easy questions. And they've asked me if we can be patient with their English. Now their English is better than my Swedish. <laughs> so I'm going to be infinitely patient. Let's start with Matthias. So your parents are Spanish. Yes, they are, yeah. And um, I, re I think you're an actor because you're a friend of the son of Stellan Skarsgård. Yes, that's, that's correct. How yes. did that... <laughs> <laughs> so you were both at acting school together? Yeah, we went to acting school together and then uh, I kind of fell off and uh, entered the construction business for a couple of years. Uh, made some money and then I decided to be an actor again and uh, luckily thanks to uh, Jan and some other people in the world, uh, it came true. So when you turned up at acting school, I think they described you as a homie in a tracksuit. Uh, yeah, something like that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they did, yeah. I was uh, not maybe from the same neighborhood as most of the other students. So Marlin, you have a Hispanic background, is that right? His Swedish Hispanic? Yeah, uh, I'm adopted from El Salvador. So, yeah, yeah. Can you, yeah, it's, I think we can, I can we adopted, turn up the mics? I am adopted from El Salvador. <laughs> ah, there we are. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so you're what we call in this country a triple threat. You're a, a, an actor, a dancer, and a singer. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so if we hum, would you sing something for us now? No, don't, no, don't worry. I'm not, we're not going to ask her that, are we? <laughs> but you do workshops in acting with people. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Actually, I'm going to ask the organizers, anything we can do about the mics because we've got the noise from behind or I'll ask them to speak more. Can you all hear at the back? They can't hear at the back. You're going to have to speak up until they can turn the mics up. Okay. Okay. So then we move on to Magnus. He has won a title which was, you'll never believe this, World's Strongest Man. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought it? <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, the interesting thing about your character is although you are physically imposing, and Jan Arne has said this to me, you've got your character is quite sensitive. He's a sensitive guy. Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the things I, I really like with my character Gunnar is that, okay, so he has a background from bodybuilding, but his size has nothing to do with, with his character. So, he's just a big bloke. And uh, the size is just with them, it's nothing he uses. Right, okay. Now you've done um, the bodybuilding, although he tells me that he shrunk. He says that when he was in competition he was much bigger, can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> well, everything is objective, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe people need to pick up their mics the way you've done. Would that be the answer? I can't see the organizers here, yeah, but... So you can all hear at the back. Can you hear any better now? Okay. Then we got Shanti. Now, Shanti, now we're going to get very cultural and artistic. Who in this audience has recently read The Wasteland? No, no, not a single hand. The last three words of The Wasteland, somebody said back there, the last three words of The Wasteland are Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. It's the Sanskrit word for peace, is it not? That's true, yeah. So is that what your name means? Uh, yeah, my parents uh, were hippies and traveled. <laughs> It's <laughs> traveled in India, and it's, uh, it's a girl's name, actually. <laughs> so, I've never met a guy with this. I think, I think you might be right by having uh, uh, hippie parents, because you have a sister called Marimba. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, so, you are actually, in some ways, the two actors, I think, on the stage you've had the most experience, are you two, because you've done 20 films? Uh, I don't know, actually. Yeah, probably, <laughs> yes. Yes. And are these films we're likely to see over here? Uh, in Britain? Uh, well, uh, excuse me? Are we likely to see any of those films over here? Will they be issued by Arrow Films? Uh, the next film is uh, Nymphomaniac, Lars von Trier. We can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in Nymphomaniac? Yeah. The Lars von Trier. Small, small part. <laughs> <laughs> small part, let's rephrase that maybe. <laughs> So I, played, I played against Charlotte Gainsbourg and a German porno actor called Big Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> but in fact, they have body doubles for the sex scenes in that film, don't they? Yeah. Oh, uh, no? Okay. <laughs> so, Klaas, yeah. you are the warrior. 
Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Yeah. I just have to say it's fantastic to be here. It's great I, to have you here. Uh, before I answer the questions, I have to say I come from Gothenburg in Sweden, and it's called Little England. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel at home. You are at home here. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, you have appeared in Valanda, and was your Valanda Krista Henriksen when yeah. you appeared? Yeah. What was what was the one that you did with him? Um, that's uh, that's a tricky one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what did I do with the? Uh, yeah, with well, what was what was the plot of the one you were in? Uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, as an actor, you do quite a lot of uh, different things. But I remember I was an um, uh, I think I was a politician, right? A crooked uh, politician, some some sort. Well, I noticed that you that you and Shanti have played a lot of scumbags. Between yeah, you. yeah, a lot of scumbags. <laughs> this is actually the first time I played a cop. So oh, was it really? <laughs> yeah, for me too, yeah. yeah. So, yes, um, and going back to Shanti, 20 films, one of them is called Together. Yeah. Ah, there we are. Some people in this audience know about Together. So <laughs> Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, it's a great movie. I play this uh, guy who likes to uh, weaving and... <laughs> He's a homosexual guy who's trying to pick up one of the guys in the communion there. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would, the question must be, and now that I'll get different answers from this. When Arne Dahl turns up on the set, is he welcome? Do you like to see him there or do you think, oh no, he's thinking we're, we're screwing up the parts? Oh, he's always, <laughs> always welcome. He's always welcome. We love you, <laughs> What else could they say? <laughs> but do you have much involvement in the actual filming of the series? Um, uh, not really. Uh, the screenplay is, is not written by me, but I have uh, sort of supervised it the whole time, uh, which was interesting. I've been to the set a few times, and I'm also actually an actor in the first one, if, you, haven't, if you may have missed me, because I'm on for five seconds, I think. You <laughs> cannot blink. <laughs> I actually had a line, it was I was supposed to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> they cut it off. <laughs> now you mentioned the screenwriters, because the, the guys who write the screenplays are highly respected. What are their names, class, the guys who write the screenplays for Arnedal? Um, Sila and Rolf. Yeah, Sila and Rolf uh, Berlin. So they've written a lot of very important series and they're very highly respected. Are you happy with what they do to your work? Absolutely, yes. Uh, it, it's been, I mean, they, it's very, very rare to get three hours for one book, which is, it's good. It's two times 90 minutes for each book. And uh, it, it allows you to, to, it allows them to, to deepen the characters and, and make sure that it's not just a crime story, it's a little bit more. Right. Mm. So Marlin, when you're doing your acting workshops, in storytelling and so forth? Is this to young acting students that you do these acting classes with? When you do training of, of other yeah. actors? Yeah. What's the question? So the question is, are they young actors that you're working with? Yeah. Oh, if, if they are okay. Yeah, yeah, it's both. Right. Both young children and also grown-ups. Yeah. But you do directing courses as well. I actually done one, yes, right. in Africa, actually. Oh, uh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That so. was quite an experience because <laughs> I worked in this one of Africa's biggest slum. So that was a totally different one. So Henning Mankel does a lot of work in, with theatre in Africa, doesn't yeah, he? Did I you, know. Did you run into him? No. <laughs> I, I, I think he's in Mozambique. He is. And I was in Kenya. Yes, so okay. that's, you know, Africa is not a country. It's like a <laughs> huge area. <laughs> So the problem we're going to have here is that we've got one hour and we've got to do questions. So there are going to be brief answers from these guys. Apologies that I'm not getting. So I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you a very unlikely question. Can you imagine Magnus dancing? Okay, because he does. <laughs> so tell us about it. It's a show called Let's Dance. Yeah, it's basically the Swedish version of Dancing with the Stars and... Uh, I did Strongman, World's Strongest Man, for 15 years of the, the season 2008. I came home and we were, you know, planning for next season. And then TV called me and asked me to, to do Dancing with the Stars. So I was thinking, why not? I was pretty fed up with Strongman anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Uh, and to my big surprise, won it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> but when you went on that show, did you think, oh, I'm going to look silly, or did you think, fuck it? <laughs> no, I, I usually think that you should never do anything unless you really think you can do it well, and that was the first time I knew I was going to do this really, really poorly and did it anyway. <laughs> and during the, the program, I, I realized that I was feeling very uncomfortable. I was thinking, this is pretty bad for a guy being 40 years old, still caring what other people think about you. So I was, I was trying ever since that to do things that I feel uncomfortable and just trying to not think so much about how people think and, and take me in. Okay. Now, can you guess, people in this audience, one of these guys has been fired from a show. Guess who? Anybody? It's, it's Matthias. <laughs> so you were fired from a soap opera. What, what happened? Yeah, what happened? I was, I was young. I was 19 years old. And... Uh, I thought uh, the script was very bad, so I tried to change it all the time. And, and, uh, <laughs> I bet that went down well. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really well received. I was surprised. You know, I had so, <laughs> I had so many good ideas. They, they wouldn't listen to me. It was crazy. So when you were fired, did that seem, this is the end of my career, or did you think, I'm going to bounce back from this? No, that was the end of the career. I mean, right. that, was, that was it. <laughs> but he did bounce back. Now, Snabba Cash, yeah. because he plays the drug dealer Salinas yeah, in Snabba Cash. Yeah, that was a, a comeback. Yes. It took nine years, though, but yes. How, <laughs> how did you get the part? Did you know Jens Lapidus? Or? I, I did know uh, some of the people that were involved in the project uh, since before, uh, since childhood, some of them. And uh, one of them, uh, uh, Joel Kinnaman, who's mm -hmm. a close friend, he, he asked me if I had read the book, and, and I had. And uh, then I went to a couple of meetings, and uh, me and the director got you know, uh, comfortable with each other, and he asked me if I wanted to do the part. And, I thought it was a way to, to uh, come back to, to the acting stuff, and uh, luckily, it, 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 you know, it went okay, so, yeah. Weren't you worried that you might get typecast as Latin drug dealer types? Uh, y yes, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was very worried, uh, actually, but I, uh, this is the first time as Shanti in class that I play a police officer, and, and uh, I think that's very good for me, because I've done, like, uh, a lo loads of gangster movies and stuff like that. So it was fun to, to be on the other side and, and, and chase criminals, rather than being one. Yeah. So have you done all three of those Jens Lapidus books? Yes, we've done the, the last part has a European premiere in, uh, I think in Scandinavia is the 13th of August, and uh, then the States and the rest of the world. So what's the title of part three? Uh, Life Deluxe. All right. It's okay. about bank robbing and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> you will like it. <laughs> Now, I think the cops, I think you'd agree on, on Anidal, are generally a likable bunch. They may have ill-advised sexual relationships occasionally, <laughs> but they're generally nice guys. Now, I would say Klaus plays one of the nicest guys, but in his filmography, in something called Joker, which I assume has nothing to do with Batman, it's got Klaus, psychopath. <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't get that. So you played a psychopath in something called Joker. Oh, yeah. That's true. Many, many years ago. I'm so sorry, I don't remember what I've done, but uh, uh, I'm very old, so. It's my uh, six. Um, no, I'm not I'm going there. But no. now you're more concerned with, the, with your babies and your family life. Yeah, I, I actually, I love my character, Viggo Norlander, and uh, he was supposed to die in Tallinn. Uh, Jan told me, and uh, then he so you liked the character, wasn't it? And then, uh, so he, he sort of uh, lived on, which I'm very glad for that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I, I love sort of the Viggo Nolanda's way through the series. It's wonderful. Yes, it's, yes. His, his journey. Yeah, his journey through the series, and and um, he he's in a working police officer at his desk, you know, yes. for so many years, and he sort of don't like people. And then after almost, almost getting killed, he sort of comes back and realizes that he has a life to live. Well, and he, he, well, so it's, it's fantastic, I think. So didn't you say, Jan, that you wanted, or you were planning to kill off several of these characters? but then you found it difficult to kill them off. 
Yes, I actually thought, uh, let's have a lot of police officers so I can kill a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the first one I tried to kill was Viggo uh, and, and uh, sort of nailed him to the floor in <laughs> Tallinn. And then I thought, no, this is the chance of his lifetime to really become a different person. Uh, and I have tried to kill a lot of these guys, but never succeeded. And they become more and more all the time. <laughs> So here's the first spoiler alert. There are some people here who have not seen the last episode yet. Yeni Hultin is going to have to let people go. And that's how the series ends, isn't it? Without us knowing who is going to be back or what is going to happen. You presumably know already, do you? <laughs> <laughs> One would think so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Shanti, speaking of crime films, you're in a film of, of the Stockholm Syndrome, which is the film that bears that title, is it not? And gave the word Stockholm Syndrome to the world. Yeah, it's true. It Tell us about that film. It, it happened in Sweden. It's a famous uh, uh, Swedish criminal guy called Clark Olofsson. He's still in jail, so he's been <laughs> mostly in jail. But he's famous, one of the more famous criminals in Sweden. And uh, another uh, small crook uh, took some hostages in a bank robbery and said they, he wanted to mm, get Clark free and three million kroners and he would leave the country. And during this time, the police barricaded the whole and, and it ended up with the, the hostages went over to the criminal side and said that the police were the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And that's... It's and you've also been in another significant Scandinavian crime series, which is Beck. Martin Beck, people know about Martin Beck here. Shovel and Valu. So yeah. how, many, how many episodes did you do? Mm, I did one. Right. I was killed. Um. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been in a few. I did Valander too, one episode. Well, I played the criminal guys in these. <laughs> and I did uh, The Eagle, the Danish one, and so on. Yeah. So, Shanti and Marlene, should your characters really have slept together? That was a bad move, was it not? <laughs> I mean, come on. You have to ask Jean about that one. <laughs> Did you want them to make, uh, I mean, they have to make mistakes, cops, don't they? Uh, yeah, well, uh, they're supposed to be human beings making human mistakes. So yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, they sleep together in the first book, and what happens between them, uh, well, you will have to wait for the next few books or TV series episodes. <laughs> <laughs> that will be an answer. But that's a tricky territory that Sitsa Baba Knudsen this morning said that she didn't want to sleep with the chauffeur. I'm sure you were all there. And uh, she was told that she had to make a mistake. She had to do something she would regret. And your characters have had to regret it, haven't they, Shanti? You paid a heavy price yeah. in the series. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that follows him during the whole series, actually. Now, Klaus has played, I don't know, you're a very cultured audience, I'm sure you know this. Arthur Miller's A View from the Bridge. You played Eddie Carboni, who is an inarticulate, uh, large guy who uses his fists all the time. Um, yeah, yes, that's true. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got one he remembered. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, well, uh, most of us are uh, stage actors uh, as well. Um, and uh, in front of a live audience, it's, it, there's where you want to be, of course. It's to intera intera interact with people. So uh, that was a fantastic play. Yeah. So when you're in London, I mean, Michael Gambon famously played Eddie Carboni. Okay. Do you try to see British actors when you're over here? In, in West End plays? Uh, yes, absolutely. Not this time, though. But, uh, no, there isn't yeah, time, is there? Yeah. So Magnus, as well as dancing, he has played himself on something called Gamoran. What is Gamoran? Uh, I'm curious myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my pronunciation, Dada. It says you play yourself. No, I think that's, uh, that's probably from the internet. It's what, just a typical morning show on TV. Oh, uh, it's a morning show. Yeah. Is it a talk show? Yeah. Okay. And do you interview people? No, I'm just one of the guys showing up there a few, a few times. So. <laughs> 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 so the other unlikely piece of playing on this stage, though, is class in Wind in the Willows. Yeah. So what were you, Toad? Or? Uh, 
Uh, no, I was the the uh, the, uh, the um, <laughs> uh, actually I was t uh, two characters. Uh -huh. uh, first, I play the weasel, is it, uh, the the one that wants to uh, well, mischievous, and uh, and then I play the rat. All right. Uh, Where is it, the rat? Can yeah. we see him in Wind in the Willows? Uh, 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 with a big body, you know, with. Uh, yeah, um, it was fantastic. It was wonderful. I love this, uh, those lines. Yeah, yeah. So I actually asked uh, Jan, uh, who we spoke yesterday. He's the only guy on the stage who I knew before today. And he gave me little thumb sketches of the various actors. So I'm going to embarrass him now. He said about you, Magnus, that you're a fast learner. What does he mean by that? <laughs> I have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I am. Um like I said, I, I did, I did my my sport for for many years, and after uh, after stopping from that, I've been trying to be open-minded and open-hearted, and try to do things that, that I find interesting and uh, things I enjoy, and uh, things that I do try to do. I what? really really try my best, and focus everything I have on that. But I don't know if I'm a fast learner. I just try to do my very best on everything I really want to do.